Hello everyone, I am Shivaram. In this video, I would like to take you all to the fascinating world of Vedic Mathematics. Mathematics is a study of numbers, shapes, movements and so on. In our daily life, we have several uses of mathematics like in counting, measuring, even in computers and so on. But in the Vedic way, the foremost purpose of mathematics is to play with numbers. Numbers are like people. We don't manipulate people. We play with people. Same with numbers. Numbers have a certain behavior. If we understand the behavior of numbers, we can make friends with them and we can play with them. Then numbers will reveal all their secrets to us. Then we can do so many creative activities with them. If we teach mathematics the Vedic way, there will be no child on this planet who is afraid of mathematics. Just like numbers are like people, the reverse is true. People are also like numbers. Everyone is unique. Someone likes red color, someone likes blue color. So every one of us is like a unique number. Someone is number 5, someone is number 10, someone is number 100. The sages who found Vedic mathematics first discovered number 0 in deep silence. They realized that we all come from zero and we go back to zero. The word Veda means knowledge. Vedas are the ancient Indian scriptures. Nobody knows how many thousands years ago they were written and who wrote them. Vedas have got all the information right from making weapons to the Vedic mathematics. But the, all the information is in the coded form. So for example, there, is, there are 16 formulae in Vedic mathematics. One of them is Ekadhikena Purvena. That means if you translate really literally into English, by one more than the one before, nobody can understand what it means. Finally, there was a person, a great man, called Bharati Krishna Tirtha. He spent years and years on these 16 formulae and he discovered the Vedic mathematics. That's what we all know now. He said, these 16 formulae can solve any problem in all the areas of mathematics, say, arithmetic, algebra, trigonometry, calculus, and so on. That's a very, very powerful statement that attracted me to the Vedic mathematics. The most important feature of Vedic mathematics compared to conventional mathematics is, it is a coherent system. A coherent means it's a very systematically arranged study. So it has three qualities. One is intuitive, reversible, complete. Intuitive, reversible and complete are the three important qualities of the Vedic mathematics. We will see one by one. Intuitive is how an untrained mind will solve any problem. For example, I ask you, uh, I give you a problem and you have to answer me in three seconds. Approximate answer is okay. Ready? So what is 42 times 23? 1, 2, 3. If I ask this question to a group of people, if there are very, very small children, they will say, well, at least one of them will say, the answer is 800. That is intuitive. We'll see how. 
An intuitive mind will work from left to right. This is because the, the digits on the left carry more value than on the right. For example, if I say a number 342, how do you write it? You write this way or this way? Obviously this way. So, the, the significance of the number is from, goes down from left to right. Accordingly, an intuitive mind will do the calculation from left to right. In case of conventional mathematics, we start the multiplication from the right. So, we start from the least significant digit. And then slowly we go to the most significant digit. Next, we'll see the other arithmetic operations. How do you do addition in the conventional way? Say 42 plus 23. How do you do? So you do from right to left. And what about subtraction? Say 42 minus 23. We do from right to left. And what about division? Say for example, 365 divided by 5. In the conventional way, we go from left to right. But we never ask why. In Vedic mathematics, we can do the calculations from left to right or right to left. Children are taught both ways and it is up to them to use which way to suit which situation. Vedic mathematics is all about choices. There is another example for the intuitive way. For example, here is the clock showing time. What is time now? You can say 2.55 or you can say 5 minutes to 3. So the second one, the 5 minutes to 3 is an intuitive way. In Vedic mathematics, we can replace the bigger digits like 9, 8 or 7 with smaller digits and do the calculations very easily. For example, we have say the, say the multiplication say 19 times 28. What we can do is, we change this number 19 to 2 bar 1. That means it's 20 minus 1. And we change 28 to 3 bar 2. That means it's 30 minus 2. And can do the calculation just using these smaller digits. This, is, uh, this makes uh, arithmetic very, very easy. Even in multiplications, you don't need to remember tables more than 5 by 5. Now we see the other two qualities of Vedic mathematics. Number two is reversible. Reversible means, example, if you learned how to do multiplication, if you do a reverse process, you will have learned division. If you learned how to do squaring numbers, if you just use a reversible process, you can easily learn how to make, how to find the square roots. We take a multiplication example, 31 times 32. We will learn in the Vedic way. So this number has tens and units, and this number also has tens and units. So we expect the answer to have hundreds, tens, and units. In the Vedic way, we can directly get the answer one digit at a time. So either it can be left to right or right to left. So for example, we try from right to left, sorry, left to right. So okay, we'll see first how many hundreds are in the answer. How do you get the hundreds? Tens in this number times the tens in this number will give us the hundreds. So 3 times 3 is 9 here. How to get the tens in the answer? Tens in this number times 1's in this number and tens in this number times 1's in this number will give us the tens in the answer. So the answer is 3 times 2 plus 3 times 1. That is again 9. And what about units? 
units in this number times units in this number will give us the unit in the answer. So that means 1 times 2, it's 2. Now, we will see how a reverse process can uh, help us learn the division. Now we use a reverse process to learn division. Say 992 divided by 31. So, as we see these numbers, we have the original number has three digits and the divisor has two digits. So, we expect the answer to have two digits. So, it's very, it's, it's very straight. The original number has nine hundreds in it. And these nine hundreds are accounted for by the product of this number and this number. Tens and tens. So, obviously, we have a three here. So, 9 divided by 3 is 3 here. And the original number has 9 tenths in it. These tenths are accounted for by this product and this product. So, already we have 3 tenths taken away. So, remaining we have 6 tenths to be accounted for by this product. So, the answer is 2 here. And the original number has 2 units. And these are accounted for by the product of these units and these units, and we see it's perfect. 1 times 2 is 2. That means we are at the right answer. So in this way, if we learn any calculation in Vedic mathematics, we can learn the opposite calculation right away. So this is also true for the squares and square roots. So this is how the second quality of Vedic mathematics, that is reversible. And the third quality of the Vedic mathematics is it's complete. The same 16 rules of Vedic mathematics cover all the areas of mathematics like calculus, algebra, trigonometry, arithmetic, and so on. Now we'll see a few more examples of Vedic mathematics. In Vedic mathematics, the bigger the number, the easier it gets to handle it. So, for example, we have, say, multiplication, say, 96 times 97. In the Vedic way, the answer comes right away. These numbers are near to a base number 100. So, in the Vedic way, we can just calculate the answer as follows. The answer we know we have, the answer will have at least four digits. So, first we see, we see how many hundreds are in the answer. And then we see how many units. 96 is four away from 100. So we write it as 04. Because it is below 100, we put a minus. And 97 is three away from 100. Now the answer, the hundreds in the answer will come right away. Either we take 96 minus 3 or 97 minus 4 gives us 9 and 3. These are the hundreds in the answer. And the units in the answer are just multiplying these two. 4 times 3, 12. I live in Japan and I am often asked by Japanese people that uh, do you guys, Indians, uh, remember the multiplication tables up to 20 by 20? Actually, no. So, in, actually, Indians use the Vedic way uh, in doing calculations up to 20 times 20 right away. So, I will explain you how. Suppose you have a number, say, 12 times 30. So the Vedic way of doing this calculation is straight away. 12 plus 3 is 15 and 2 times 3 is 6. We take another example. 17 times 18. So the answer has two parts. The first part is 17 plus 8. That is 25. And the second part is 7 times 8, that is 56. We just write it one bit shifted to the right and add them up, we get 306. 
children just tell the answer for any uh, multiplication up to 20 by 20 in maybe 3 seconds or so. This is actually a bright product of the Vedic system of calculations. So we have a com comprehensive system in the mathematics, uh, in the Vedic mathematics, and uh, there are so many techniques or shortcuts that are also available for us to use. Now we'll see how to use the bar numbers, the intuitive way of handling bigger digits. Say for example we have 19 times 28. So as I told you earlier, so this 19 we can write it as 2 bar 1 and then 28 we can write it as 3 bar 2 and then we can just do the multiplication the way we just explained earlier. So we find first find the hundreds. 2 times 3, there are 6 hundreds here. And then how many tens are here? 2 times bar 2, that is bar 4. 3 times bar 1, that is bar 3. The total is bar 7. And then the number of units is bar 1 times bar 2. This will be a 2. Now we just need to convert the bar number back to the normal numbers. So 67 is actually 60 minus 7. So this will be a 53 and then 2. So this will be a 532. That's the answer. The advantage of bar numbers is very significant in some examples. For example, we have say 1 divided by 19. If you take the conventional way of uh, doing this division, if you see, we take a 1 here and then we divide by 19. We put a point here and then a 0 here and then another 0 to get a 100 so we can be uh, divided. And then we can see, so okay, we have to remember the 19th table here. So 19 fives, 95, and then a 50, and then 19 twos are 38, 12, and then probably 19 six are, and then we, and so on, we, we go, five, two, six, three, and so on. So, we will see in the Vedic way how to do it. In the Vedic way, this division is very easy. We, instead of dividing with 19, we divide with 2 bar 1. Because 19 we can write it as 2 bar 1. And in the, the beautiful thing about Vedic way of division is, whatever is the divisor, we only divide with the first digit, and then we just use the other digits for just adjusting the reminders. So I'll show you how we divide, make this division. So basically we divide 1 with 2. So the answer goes like this. First, we divide 1 with 2. How many 2's are in 1? There are none. So 0, the remainder is 1. We prefix the remainder as like this. And then we take this as the digit to be divided by 2. So this is 10 divided by 2, it will be 5 remainder 0, and then we have 5 divided by 2, that is 2 remainder 1, and then 12 divided by 2, that is 6 remainder 0, and then we have 6 divided by 2, that is 3 remainder 0, 3 divided by 2, is 1 remainder 1, 11 divided by 2, that is 5 remainder 1, and then we have 15 divided by 2, that is 7 remainder 1, and then we have 17 divided by 2, that is 8 remainder 1, and then we can keep going, 9 remainder 0, 4 remainder 1, 7, remainder 0, 3, remainder 1, 6, remainder 1, 8, remainder 1, eight, remainder 0, and then we have 4, remainder 0, 2, remainder 0, and then 1, remainder 0. This is where we reach the original one number. Again, now we have 1 will be divided with 2. So this is a recurring number. 
So we put a dot here, for example. So how many digits will be recurring? If you see, there are about nine here and nine here. There are about 18 digits that will be recurring. That is the answer for this number, for this question. So if you see the reminder, somewhere here we got a number, 18. This 18 is nothing but the 19 minus 1. Whenever we reach the number, say, the denominator minus numerator, the 18, actually we reach the halfway of the total recurring number. That is the number 1 finding. And the other one is, if you see, add up these two digits, it is always 9. The other finding is, the total number of recurring numbers is also 18. It is also denoted by the denominator minus numerator. That is 19 minus 1 is 18 and there are 18 numbers recurring in this problem. So, this is how we can solve this problem in Vedic Mathematics. The Vedic methods are applicable to all areas of mathematics, as I told you. So, for example, see, we have taken algebra. Suppose we have a plus b times a plus b. We can treat this multiplication the same way we did a two-digit times two-digit number. So, as you remember, the first we did, we take the product of these two, the most significant ones, a times a, that is, a square. And then you remember the cross multiply and the add. So, a times b, a b, there is another a b here, the total is 2 a b. And then we have the least significant bridge we take a product, that is b squared. So, the, so, solving the quadratic equations, ax squared plus bx plus c, is very easy and strive in Vedic mathematics. The conventional way says the square root is uh, minus b plus r minus square root of b squared minus 4ac by 2a. See, it doesn't have any meaning as such. But the Vedic way, there is a system, there is a beautiful way to explain this. It says the differential is equal to the square root of discriminant. What is the differential? So if you take a d by dx of differential of this equation, we get 2ax plus b. And this is equal to the square root of discriminant. We call the b squared minus 4ac as the discriminant. We have a mathematical proof for this formula in Vedic mathematics. So this is a, a more, this is actually the same as the conventional way, but it is uh, mentioned in a more systematic way. Though I have not told you the exact way of doing uh, 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 arbitrary number division in Vedic mathematics, uh, I would just say it is easily extendable to the algebra. So for example, we have say 1 by x plus 1. So in the Vedic way, we can just get the answer right away. So actually the answer will be an infinite series expansion like 1 by x minus 1 by x squared plus 1 by x cubed and so on. Even in the square roots, it's the same way. If you learn how to calculate the square roots of the numbers, you can just calculate the square root of say uh, x plus 1. In the Vedic way, it will be another infinite series expansion. All the methods we learn in Vedic mathematics are extendable to any arbitrary order. So for example, if we learn square roots, the same procedure can be extended for cubic roots and so on. Multiplications, we learn two digits. It can be extended to any number of digits times any number of digit multiplications and so on. Bharati Krishna Tirtha used to say that what it takes 20 years in the conventional way of learning mathematics would only take 9 months in Vedic mathematics. So, well, Bharati Krishnadirda only left us with one book that is it's a little bit complex and uh, difficult for the common people. I learned Vedic mathematics from 
Dr. Ken Williams of uh, VedicMaths.org. So Ken Williams actually created textbooks for different levels of children in a very easily explainable format. There are several courses uh, for the interested people who want to learn more about Vedic mathematics. I wanted to pass on this knowledge to everyone I come in touch with and this is my first step towards doing that. So I will keep posting more and more videos in this channel. You can keep in touch on Facebook or by communicating through email or by subscribing to the YouTube channel. I want every child on this planet to learn Vedic mathematics. Age doesn't matter. Smart brain, dumb brain, there is no concept like that. Every child is born sensitive and smart. Every child is born with an untrained mind that is actually intuitive. If we train his mind in the intuitive way, then his expression will be more and more clear and expression leads to creation. Thank you so much for watching this video.